Over the past few years, there have been many theories and thoughts as to why we sleep, and although the exact answer is difficult to pin down, we certainly spend a lot of time doing it. The average human spends up to a third of their life asleep, given that you sleep an average of eight hours a night. For millennia, it was believed that sleep was merely a passive state in which the body and mind rested. Or, as Aristotle believed, just an unremarkable and unimportant period marked by an absence of our usual sense perceptions. However, it has become abundantly clear in recent decades that sleep is not simply a matter of putting our mental and physical activities on hold for a while, but rather a genuine second state with its own complex and varied mental and physical activities. The more we learn about sleep, the more fascinated we become by it. We remain particularly perplexed by the phenomenon of dreaming. The real purpose or functions of dreams are still not entirely understood, and precisely why we dream remains one of the great unanswered questions of behavioral science. As we dug deeper into understanding sleep, we began to ask more questions. We know that we need sleep, regardless of if we fully understand why. But what were to happen if we didn't sleep? Because sleep is such a biological necessity, the effects of not sleeping can be detrimental, to the point where sleep deprivation has been used as a means of torture. And while there is some debate on whether it could happen to humans, tests have shown that sleep deprivation can be lethal. Experiments from lab rats to dogs, when forced to remain awake, have all concluded the same, with the death of the test subjects. So, on January 20th, 1959, when a man named Peter Tripp declared that he would stay awake on the air for 200 hours, eight days and nights, it caught national attention. Tripp was a disc jockey, or DJ, and a very successful one at that. He was a pioneer and a famous top 40 countdown personality. Tripp claimed the stunt was entirely for charity, to benefit the March of Dimes. It was endearingly dubbed a wake as a play off the usual walk However, Tripp was involved in a scandal where he was accused of accepting bribes or gifts from record companies in exchange for playing or promoting particular records. In fact, only weeks after his stunt, it emerged that he had accepted over $36,000 in bribes, despite his persistent claims that he, quote, never took a dime from anyone. However, despite this, most people knew and continue to know Tripp as the stay-awake man. If Tripp succeeded, it would be the longest period a person had ever been without sleep on record. In order to keep himself on track, he broadcasted almost non-stop during his wake period. Also, in order to keep the attempt honest, he was doing this from inside a transparent glass broadcast booth in Times Square, where anyone passing by would be able to witness. There was a morbid but also genuine fascination with the attempt and doctors and psychologists were eager to discover the outcomes. Tripp's radio station asked a young sleep researcher, Lewis Jolly West, to supervise the experiment. At first, West was against the experiment and attempted to persuade them to not go through with it. 
West believed that the experiment could cause significant harm. His belief stemmed from his own experiences and studies. In 1953, West worked as a psychiatrist at a U.S. Air Force base in Texas. It was there that he treated a group of American pilots who had been captured by a group of Chinese communists in the Korean War. The Chinese had tortured the prisoners by forcing them to remain awake. The pilots suffered tremendous psychological damage and confessed that they believed they were no longer who they used to be. This was a reason that scientists shied away from sleep deprivation studies and experiments. But Tripp was determined to go ahead, and professionals would not allow the opportunity to go to waste. Tripp was monitored around the clock 24-7. He was not allowed to be alone, even for a minute. Professionals who monitored him would not even allow him to go to the bathroom unaccompanied, as awkward as it may have been for the parties involved. Those in charge of making sure he stayed awake said that after a while, Tripp would attempt to get them to look away for a minute so he could have a quick cat nap, but they were vigilant and wouldn't be so easily fooled. It became increasingly difficult to keep Tripp awake as the hours drug on, but they didn't stop. They continued to push Tripp to finish his stunt partially because they believed in him and wanted to see him succeed, but partially, and perhaps more so, they wanted to find out what would happen. There had never been such an opportunity or experiment before, and it was hoped that it could provide valuable scientific insight on the matter of sleep deprivation. Tripp understood how major and how important of a contribution he was making outside of charity and publicity, and continued to push himself to the finish line. However, staying awake for extended periods of time is not easy and has incredible effects on your physical and mental health. By the third day, his behavior began to change. He was abusing everyone around him, including his barber who he had known for years. He cursed and insulted his barber to the point that the barber began crying and would not speak to Tripp again. Tripp was given full medical examinations every day, and the first major physical change the doctors noted was a drop in his body temperature. His body temperature continued to steadily decline, and the lower it went, the crazier things got. On the fourth day, Tripp began to see things that weren't there. He mistook one of the doctors for an undertaker who had come to bury him. Tripp was so terrified that he ran into the street, into heavy traffic. One of the assistants ran after him and had to tackle him to keep him from being struck by a passing taxi. By the fifth day, Tripp began to completely lose his hold on reality. Dr. West was growing increasingly concerned as Tripp described his further hallucinations. Tripp was hearing voices. At first, the medical team was surprised by the hallucinations, but then they made the discovery that Tripp's brainwaves were shadowing the 90-minute REM cycle of dream sleep, meaning that although Tripp was awake, he was dreaming, and he was having nightmares. One reoccurring hallucination that Tripp was having that truly frightened him was seeing spiders in his shoes. He would reportedly remove them and ask others to look, but no one could see what Tripp was seeing. Oddly enough, though, whenever it came time for Tripp to perform his show, he was able to do so fluidly, his DJ personality taking over without much interruption. But as the 200-hour mark approached, his doctors were very concerned and struggled with allowing Tripp to continue, wanting to bring a quicker end to the experiment. But by this time, Tripp had already endured so much through his journey 
that everyone was rooting for him to hold on just a little longer, even as they became increasingly unnerved by him. Tripp's pregnant wife attempted to cheer him on, but even she was frightened. On the very last evening of the experiment, the team monitored Tripp's brainwaves once again, and they discovered that, somehow, he had entered an altered state of consciousness. Peter Tripp was awake. He realized he was awake, but his scans showed that he was asleep. He was functioning, up walking, and talking with his medical team. But Peter Tripp was, according to his brain, asleep. Tripp confided in Dr. West that people thought he was Peter Tripp, but that he really wasn't. He told West that he was an imposter. He was someone else only pretending to be Peter Tripp. On January 28th, Tripp achieved his goal and broke the world record for sleeplessness. In total, he stayed awake for 201 hours, and then he slept for 24, after which his delusions were gone and he believed himself to be back to normal. However, his wife so adamantly insisted that he was changed, and it resulted in their divorce. In the months that followed the stunt, Tripp was not able to regain the man that he was. He lost his job and became a drifter, and those that knew him before claimed that the experiment left him permanently 